Hi, I'm Tappy and welcome to my Barnes combo video. In this video I'm going to talk about all the different ways you can use Barnes. So range from the very good, which is summoning stuff like Ragnaros or Malagos, to the mediocre stuff like Morose is alright, but it depends what you want to do with your deck. I'm not going to make a differentiation between Standard and Wild, it's going to be any card you can put in your deck. So let's just get to it. Just as a reminder, Barnes is a 4 mana 3-4 legendary, with Battlecry summon a 1-1 copy of a random minion in your deck. There's many different cards we might want to draw from this, or summon from this rather. I've categorised them according to some rough categories. So token generators can be pretty good if your goal is to continuously flood the board. So things like Hogger, with Hogger type effects at the end of your turn, summon something. So Obsidian Destroyer summons a 1-1 Taunt, Hogger a 2-2 Taunt, Morose a 1-1 Vanilla. These are reasonably good. Other things in a similar vein are Violet Teacher and Illidan. In the past, Druid and Rogue have been the typical token decks. Dreadsteed is a good pickup if you're having a Dreadsteed deck, obviously. There's some others which generate small minions, but they're not particularly useful, like Infested Wolf, Mantle Raptor, etc. Next, let's look at some minion generators. So things like Sneeds and Confessor Palatris could be very good. Yashaj, drawing a massive body, is going to be very good in Ramp Druid, I'd say. A new Barak is interesting because not only do you get a 4-4, but you get a new Barak in your hand as well as the one that's still in your deck. So for very late game rogues that could be pretty good. For the mid range you've got stuff like Pilot, Sky Golem, Cairn, Savannah, High Main, which could be very good. To a lesser extent, Fugan and Stalag. And then you've got stuff like Murloc Knight, which is pretty good. Card draw is where it gets a little bit interesting. So obviously Ysera is going to be quite a good draw. Chromagus could draw you some stuff, like Power Word Shield. You could have Chromagus stay for a couple of turns, which would be amazing. Next is Champion Sarad for RNG. Why not? Shifting Shade, Acolyte of Pain, Manatite Totem, Darkshire Librarian, Loot Hoarder, Undersea Huckster. These are sort of the mid-range options, as well as Nat Pagel. But where it really kicks up a notch, I think, is Gadgets and Auctioneer. So stuff like Miracle Rogue could see a big resurgence because of this. Because just imagine, you use Barnes to summon Gadgets and Auctioneer, and then you Shadow Step it straight away, or if you don't get it, you Shadow Step Barnes to have another go. It's basically another bite of the apple, so it could be very good. Board buffing could be a secondary concern, so stuff like Questing Adventurer, Cavalier Raider, Floating Watcher, these basically buff themselves, which is great. Then you've got stuff like Anubisath and Spawn on the Zoth, which will just buff the rest of the board. Warhorse Trainer, situationally, is good as is Flame Tongue Totem, because you could get the Tuscar Totemic effect with Barnes, which we all know how good that can be situationally, so that's good. And Malgana situationally as well, not too bad. Now Barnes is quite interesting when it comes to control, probably the best example of this will be Sylvanas. So you summon a 1-1 Sylvanas, which you can possibly ping on the same turn, better than a 5-5 Sylvanas in some cases, to steal the minion you want. Acid Moor, you could get a good trade or good board clear, to a lesser extent, Void Crusher and Cold Arrow Drake can be used for control. Halazil, in conjunction with a board clear like Elemental Destruction, could be a surprise way to get back to full life against aggro or something similar. Fell Cannon Demolisher, they're alright. Savage Combatant, they're okay. Frost Caller Flame Walker, Flame Waker, sorry, that could be good. Patient Assassin could be good, you know, there's possibilities. As for board clears, we have a few options here. Obviously I've mentioned Acid more, but there's Chill more for Dragon decks. Anomalous could be good for Mage Control. Abominations and Baron Geddon are pretty good at wiping the board. Dreadscale could do it situationally, and Wild Paramancer also situationally, so that's not too bad there. There are many unique cards which work pretty well in this situation. Deathwing Dragon Lord is one of them. In a Dragon deck with a very top-heavy Dragon set, it is possible to get turn 4, 1-1 one, one Deathwing Dragon Lord, turn 5, dump your hand full of massive dragons for free, and that could be game over right there. Cthune is not very good, to be honest. I mean, as a Cthune deck, it's, it's not good. But if you had some sort of janky deck which used Cthune as a finisher, in theory, you could Barnes into Cthune and play Doomcaller on curve, so you'd then have two Cthunes in your deck, at least 8-8, which would be okay. Ragnaros obviously is good for control or just smashing the face. Tyrion Forging again good for control. Nazoth Pally is going to get very strong, in fact Nazoth in general, because a lot of the Death Rattle minions which are good with Nazoth are also good with Barnes. So Ronin is good, so you get lots of cheap spells, so then you could do some sort of burn OTK pretty easily. Malorn in some sort of beast deck, the Druid. Multiple Malorns are always good. Ragnaros Light Lord, good for healing. So if you're against aggro and you're half dead by turn 4, it does happen. 
back you go, and that could save you the game. Antonidas, obviously, you're going to get the fireballs, so there could be some synergy there. You get multiple cracks at the synergy. Aviana, it's not very likely, because just imagine you're a ramp druid and you've got a very heavy, like top heavy ramp druid. You somehow pull Aviana, and then you just dump the rest of your hand. This isn't a turn 4 play, but it is a turn, well, it could be a turn 4 play with Innovate, so that could be good. Thorson, obviously, if you get multiple procs of Emperor Thorson, it's, it's just very good in general for combo decks and for OTKs, funny enough. And there's a lot of lesser things which could be good. So Foundral Staghelm, Brand Bronzebeard, Zarel, you know, these sort of things could be alright. Twilight Elder, nah, not really. Deadly Fork could be okay. Sort of like Tyrion, but not quite as good, I suppose. So there's some of the cards that are good for Barnes to summon, but what about good cards to play with Barnes? So you've got Brand Bronzebeard is an obvious one. Double the battle cry, you get two big minions or two minions which help your game plan. Youthful Brewmaster and Shadow Steps are amazing, ancient brewmasters, so you could have a deck that revolves around constantly bouncing barns to get massive minions, or possibly you could use barns to draw a very big minion or a very important minion for later, I and mean, then you could shadow step that minion, so you could play it later. Duplicate, so yep. That speaks for itself. Either Barnes gets duplicated or the massive minion gets duplicated. Either way, you're in a very good spot. Echo Medivh, similar situation. Innovate in Druid is good, so you could do something similar to Rogue. So you could do Barnes, Innovate, Ethel, Brewmaster. Priest, Silence and Purify. Technically, it is possible. If you didn't care about the text, you just wanted a massive minion, you could Barnes into a 1 1 massive minion and silence it until like 10 10 or 12 12. As I've already mentioned, Barnes is good as just a drop-in for any Nazoth deck because the Death Routers are there because they're strong and Barnes works with them as well as Nazoth does. Sylvanas three times in one game, I don't mind that at all. Resurrect Priest could be a fun deck to play, it's not going to be great. Barnes is a good fit there, in fact I'd say almost mandatory because it's a good way to get an early Velon or Malagos into your graveyard, which you can then resurrect cheaply through Resurrect and possibly Onyx Bishop. The only negative, really, is that Barnes will get in the graveyard too. There's no real way to stop him polluting the graveyard. Similarly, if you have Onyx Bishop, certainly not a two of, I'd say. One of, at most. Barnes could summon Onyx Bishop, and that's your whole Resurrect graveyard plan up the spout, which is not ideal. But the main idea is to have multiple turns to inflict burn or Ragnaros damage. So it's not an OTK, but it's a reasonable combo situation, which could work. Speaking of combos, quite a fun one is Blood of the Ancient One, in my opinion. So it's not good, but you could Barnes into Blood of the Ancient One, Faceless Manipulator that, and at the end of your turn you'd end up with a 3-4 and a 30-30. You might think Conceal would work, but it wouldn't, because the 1-1 one, one minions would be concealed, but they'd transform into a 30-30, which would be unstealthed. If I don't see a video of it in action soon after Barnes is released, I will probably do a video myself. However, Trolden will probably beat me to it. The final thing I want to say about Barnes is his potential to break the tour of rule for minions for any class. The way you'd do this is you'd Barnes into the minion you want multiple copies of, and then you Brewmaster that minion. So suddenly you can have three Timberwolves for an OTK, three Dragonhawks, three ship's cannons or South Sea deck cannons. All the Murlocs are great. Shadow Boxer, Medivh's Valet, there's a lot of potential to abuse this mechanic and I love it. I'm going to have a lot of fun with Barnes in multiple different ways, take that how you will. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope it was informative and I didn't drone on for too long, I probably did, I'm sure at least one of you will say I droned on for way too long, in fact I'm doing it right now. So um, yeah, bye!